Good morning, Steve. It's a big plan. So we now have the full details on Harris's economic agenda. It's focused in four parts on taxes, health care, housing and food. On the tax front, just this hour, we're learning Harris is calling to restore the child tax credit and to expand it to provide up to six thousand dollars for families with kids under one. She also wants to expand the earned income tax credit and reduce taxes on health insurance premiums. On health care, she wants to cap the cost of insulin at thirty five dollars and cap prescription drug costs at two thousand dollars for everyone, not just seniors. She's also vowing to increase competition in the pharmaceutical industry and to cancel medical debt for millions of people. On housing, she wants to use tax credits to incentivize construction of three million homes in her first term and provide up to $25,000 in down payment assistance for first-time buyers. She also wants to ban corporate price gouging in the grocery industry. So clearly here, guys, this is a left-leaning populist agenda that expands on and actually takes further some of President Biden's policies. It'll be celebrated by progressives, but it has already earned some criticism from some economists who compare it to price controls and who say it would exacerbate supply issues, especially in food and in housing. And for Trump's part, he's offering some of his own ideas this week, including ele cutting electricity and energy costs by half within a year by drilling for more oil. And he wants to permanently extend his 2017 tax cuts and cut regulation while imposing that minimum 10 percent tariff on all imports. Again here, of course, economists have concerns the tax cuts would dramatically increase the debt, while tariffs would drive up prices. But clearly, there's still a long way to go before any of this becomes reality. It does does show us, though, the priorities that each candidate is carrying into November. Andrew, back over to you guys. So there you go, you, got, you know, Kamala Harris. You know, she that's you know she brought out a couple of her policies, and also um, um, Donald Trump has something to say about his policies as well. So um, go ahead, Mohammed. I, I don't know if you want to um, uh, go on to Dr. Umar said, and also uh, add what we add on Kamala Harris. Oh, uh, Kamala Harris, and also Donald Trump of their economic plan. So go ahead, Mohammed Mango. The floor is yours. Mohammed. You might got your mute button on. Mohammed. Yeah, I'm, I'm the yeah. Yeah, he was he, I saw him he was cammed up and everything cuz I'm looking I'm looking at him on my on, on my TV screen. Yeah. And so yeah, my still not having, Go ahead. I'm gonna I'm drop you off. Click the link back again. Cause All I right. Go ahead, Ronnie. Man, what's your take? Um, like like the uh, like the uh, like the uh, the anchor, uh, the news anchor stated. Um, she pretty much copying the same plan Biden Biden pretty much stated when he was running for president. The same as I planned. The only new, the only new plan she added was on was uh with the child was the child's um uh, the child's break. Which is a six K, and not only that, but um, just hear me out. Say the same thing. The twenty five, the um, on twenty five hundred, not twenty five hundred, twenty five K for new homes sounds good on paper, but it'd be very dis uh, disastrous when it comes to reality. And it's true. It it would really hurt the economy. Remember, right now we still dealing with the national debt. My our 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 main focus is to bring down the national debt down. It's not to increase the national debt. But by her new bringing in these new economic plans, it's gonna hurt the debt even more. It's gonna put us in a. It's, it's gonna put us in. It's gonna put us in a. It's gonna put us in a hole. So I think right now her main focus is to see, okay, what can she do to bring down the national debt, and not not only that, but make it easier for everybody, everybody that's a United States citizen. Because remember, our my our our main agenda is okay. Let's bring down costs. Cause right now inflation is way too high. Things are way too expensive. How can we? How can we be able to make sure that consumers are relaxed enough to spend their money again and not be too afraid and say, "Oh, I can't go out there and get a new home because I don't have enough money, or I don't have enough money for the down payment." Make it easier for United States citizens so it can be easier for her to win. But she's doing the, the exact same plan as Joe Biden, which I kind of figured she would would do because they don't really have nothing new. It's always in the same. And Trump. Trump, a whole idea is to pretty much drill and to bring down energy costs and also, you know, electric, you know, electricity. Because right now, a lot of people's electricity bill is high. Some people's electricity bill is high to the point of three hundred dollars, which is which is absurd. And they have a small bedroom house, so it's like, okay, that's crazy. But at the same time, if things continue to go up, costs going to continue to go up as well. So we need to we need we we need to get it together, folks. We need to get it better. 
to get it together. Shout out to the lovely Mimi who's also in the building, one of the co-hosts of the Sideshow Avengers. She's also in the building. Shout out to you. Go ahead, all. Just hit me out. Go right ahead. <clears throat> yeah, I was just going to comment on the the $25,000 house down payment, right? The, the, this is a classic example of a terrible idea. One that looks good on paper. Hey, we'll give everyone the down payment. No. Pricing on housing is high because supply is completely restricted because nobody wants to give up their 3% mortgage. So you got nobody moving out of the old houses. You can yep. only build so many new houses at a certain rate. Yeah. Right. And people, so there's very limited supply, uh, artificially causing the price to go higher. If you give everyone $25,000, the price just goes up $25,000 across the board. Right. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't make any, any sense that it will drive it even higher because you're flooding even more buyers into the market that can't, if, can't right now, uh, theoretically can't afford it, right? You're just pushing them over the edge. Okay, here you go. Now, I don't think that owning a house is a problem per se, if you can afford it, right? Because it's a lot better than renting, right? There needs to be a better, better plan for, you know, get off the rent wheel, get to home ownership because rents are going way up around here at least, right? Because uh, property taxes go up because everyone wants to vote for everything thinking it doesn't matter. And then they push those costs back into the rents when they can redo it every year. Right. So, um, it, it's, it's a horrible idea. And I, I don't understand how people don't get that. You can't just hand out the money. Right. That's why we do tax free, or you can deduct the mortgage interest on your taxes. You're not giving somebody money but you're making it more affordable by doing that. Right. So I don't know. You can alter, <laughs> you can go back to the days of Oh seven, no income, no job, no, no assets. Right. Here you go. Here's the house. How did that work out last time? It didn't work out at all. Not at all. Right. So no, no, but they, I think, I think the whole idea is to get new buyers back into the market. Cause right now a lot of people are not buying homes. A lot of no, people right now are there afraid are buyers. to rent. There aren't sellers. I mean, they sorry, they ain't sellers. They are buyers, but they ain't sellers. So you know, it, things are too high. People, as I was telling you, just hit me out right now. A lot of people can't afford to buy a home. A lot of people can't even afford to get a to, to take care of their own rent. So literally, a, a house is just absurd. Yeah, what you need to do is you need to have some kind of modification to where the mortgage sticks with the uh, borrower, right? No, mm -hmm. I think they do that in Europe or some somewhere, right? So basically, you have a mortgage for say five hundred thousand, right? And that's attached to your name, right? And so if you move to a different house, you're not selling this one back to the bank and then getting a new mortgage for the new one minus the cash you put down. Basically, you're just transferring that to the new property, right? I mean, there is there is it's not as simple as that, right? But um, that would loosen up supply uh, a lot, but you know, mortgage rules are extremely controlled after 2007, 2008. But I don't know. So, so um, go ahead, Kim, your thoughts. I agree with him 100%, but one thing I also want to talk about is people got to understand something. When they talk about giving away this FHA loan and all this government money, where they get the money from to do this? Oh, they borrow it. <laughs> Well, the no, FHA no. loan is different. The FHA, FHA loan, basically, you just, I mean, similar to the advantages of like a military mm -hmm. uh, first time homebuyer or whatever, right? There's yeah. less down payment restrictions required mm -hmm. for the PMI because the PMI gets rolled into the monthly payment. Mm -hmm. So you're increasing the monthly payment, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So um, I think that you could obviously loosen the restrictions on first time homebuyers, right? Yeah. Not yeah. having a deposit down isn't the craziest thing, right? Because it's yeah. totally understandable. If you have the income and you can make the payment, just like you're making a rent payment right now, you mm -hmm. can move into a house, right? But if you can't save up the down payment, you're just doing it for a long time while prices go further out. But uh, this solves nothing. No, no, no but price is going to continue to go up. Price is not going to go down for home. It's going to continue to go up. Um, I heard that from a lot of comments. It's going to continue to go up regardless of the fact. Regardless, whoever yeah, is in not office, forever. You said not forever. 
Now, <laughs> I mean, I think it's going to go. I think it's you, going up. Do you think it? Do you think it'll plateau at some point? Because, mind you, the average home right now, literally across the United States, is a um, quarter of a million dollars or you know, half a million. Yeah, they pla- they've plateaued around here compared mm-hmm. to what they were doing before. But I mean, the the plateau is still a ridiculous price. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, you're, we're talking a three or four bedroom home for over a million, easy. Like, yeah, because they I, this is my idea, Jesse. I, mean, I think they want people to rent. They don't want people to truly buy. And I, I don't like the uh, rules for. Uh, I'll clean up the stash when I feel like it. I finally got the knots <laughs> out of my hair. I was yeah, pulling at it for weeks. That was a night. No, but now that, but now that, but happy anniversary. I know you. Oh, thank you. Happy, happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. You showing us the ring, like you balling. We know you big balling. You don't have to no. Do the ring. I we told know. you, lab grown diamonds. I'm not <laughs> ball out. Yeah, well, we know you big balling. You ain't had to show like, look. No, I understand. You love your wife. To me, I want to do the same thing for my wife and I can hey, too. And I know Jordan yeah, going to do the same. So, you know, yeah. shout out to um, shout out to nineties. That's also in the building. We really do greatly appreciate it. To me, women love diamonds. Go ahead, yeah, buy her diamonds. She deserves well, it. She most, treats you well. She rub your feet like I can I can pick. Cut your toenails. Cut she my has the biggest diamonds in town, huh? <laughs> I said, cut my toenails. Most of the nights are expensive too, baby. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. shout out to Ken Doll. The mall father's in the building. My bad, Ken Doll. I, I forgot to give you some anonymous man. <laughs> it's just like just hit me out when you're talking about the housing. Because you know, because I'm looking to buy a house. Um, just hit me out. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I've been doing research. We are. Um, me, Jordan, and Hakeem, we really looking to buy a house. And, you know, my dad always tell me, don't be afraid. Go out there. But I'm like, the market is just crazy right now. And I'm, I'm doing the same thing. I'm like, okay, I'm waiting to it to cool. But I'm listening to different <laughs> people with, like, different people who have idea what's going on in the market. They say it seems like it's never going to slow down. Whether right? Trump is in the office or even Kamala Harris, it doesn't really matter. Well, I'll, I'll... Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I'll, go ahead, I'll just Jordan. say, if, if, I'll, I'll just say, even though houses going up, you know, here in West Coast, in the South, especially in the Midwest, I heard, you know, I heard Detroit, you know, the uh, housing is, is going up as well. But uh, hopefully, eventually, there, there will be a cap. You know, I may not, it may not be this year, but next year, we we'll probably see maybe, maybe there's a cap and everything, because as you see, you know, every time you see interest rates going up seven, eight, nine percent and everything. So, especially in these ma- major cities and everything, and, and I believe, you know, major cities. You know, right now it's it's definitely the worst to buy a house and everything. But I definitely could see a, a cap cooling down as as well because it, it, eventually it'll, it'll have to slow down, Ronnie. It, it definitely have to slow down. Um, going no, back, you know, no, go ahead. You say you think it's going to slow down, but you know the average black man don't make that type of money. I'm just being honest. Absolutely. That's why. That's why. I, I, hopefully, it will slow down. <laughs> the average American don't even make that kind of money. But the thing exactly. is true. People are now going to have to start getting creative with buying houses. You're going to have to go rural. Let's just get something straight about it. 30 30 minutes to an hour outside of the city. That's where you're going to get somewhat of a price. The only thing is you ain't going to be able to take your job with you. You know what I mean? So something's going to have to cut and hurt. Like, look, in in the state of Florida, it's so expensive. You have to, to find something even decent. You got to go outside of outside of Jupiter. Yeah, outside of Jupiter is either you That's go to Port Saint, Port Saint Lucie, Fort Myers, Lee I Acres, going out west. How's, how's Homestead? Is Homestead was getting expensive. No, oh no, nobody, Homestead said the same, but nobody want to go there because Homestead is way out. Uh, way, way 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 out, out there, but the houses are the houses are beautiful. It's, yeah, it's beautiful. houses are because yeah, I've been looking too. over there too as well. But nobody yeah. nobody want to really drive. That's like an hour hour drive. But when we talking about um, Vero Beach, Titusville, I'm talking about literally, um, um, what should we call it? Places where there's like a Dollar General for the whole town. Like you're gonna have to go rural. That's what's gonna have to happen, and it's possible because a lot of people work from home now. So you can get a work from home job and probably find a house for a hundred and twenty thousand. Or we just gotta get married to a woman that's making a decent amount of money. And then Basically. we just put our money together and we're able to get a nice home if you want to live so within the city. Yeah. Oh, now you did just hit me out? <laughs> yeah. Now what you did just hit me out? I thought you were going to buy a house. Oh, you got to save for it. We got to save for it. I'm like, get a woman that you know she's good. She's financially literate. She understands how the financial game goes. Let's yeah. put our money together and let's go ahead and get a home. Your name's on the lead. Your name's on the title. My name's on the title. So whatever. We get a divorce. We just split it in half. You know, but women be like, man, got to pay. Man, got to pay for everything. 
And I'm like, no, man should not be paying for everything. Absolutely. Absolutely. Is it the I queen? Can't, <laughs> I, I can't go ahead. I can't. I can't no play. Go ahead and just drop her. She haven't been here. No, for no, no. I'm not going to do it. Don't even get her. Listen, 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 no acknowledgement. Oh, don't get her. No acknowledgement right now. She hasn't listen, been here for months. And you say this is a she queen. Hasn't, she haven't been here at all. This is the first time I'm going to disagree with you. I can't do it, baby. Yeah. She probably watching this I can't the do it, Rony. I can't. <laughs> No I way, can't. I'm gonna pay to drop her off. Because no, she hasn't no. been here for months. Hey, listen, the hey, listen. She hasn't I'm come for months. She was home. like, oh, I'm coming to Miami. Guys, I'm coming to Miami. And she disappeared. Listen. Never came back. Go on. And you listen. can give her like, she the queen. Hey, I went over there to offer Sharon some money. He said, you don't got enough. <laughs> <laughs> but like no. It? Go ahead. How y'all doing, first off? We're doing well. We're doing well. We're doing well. We're doing well. Um, Actually, I was just coming up because y'all said like Homestead is still fairly cheap and it's not, right? So they done gentrified Florida City even. And if you know Florida City, Ooh. like that's the part that nobody wanted to be in. That's Modella. where the pickers was at, right? Modella, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So they've even gentrified that uh, place. You know, the houses in Florida City are going for 300 plus. Last I checked. They may yep. be over four now. Um, and so, you know, it's everywhere. But uh, to disagree with Governor Ron, absolutely men are supposed to pay for everything. Man, you, you know, how can you not going to drop her yet? You still got her on the panel. I'm, 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 I'm going to have to disagree with her on that, though, but I still want to keep her on. I say, you know, say I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, I can't. You being a simp, you being a simp today. You see, Ruthless Truth was right about you. No, <laughs> you're know, like, bye. I, I'll simp the day now. I'll simp the day. <laughs> I'll no, but go ahead, Jordan. Jordan. Yeah, go ahead, Jordan. Jordan was gonna do his commentary on Kamala Harris and the cop. No, I love PhD. I, I was just joking with him. Look, look, so, I, I, sorry, hey, Supreme God is PhD. Go ahead. I, I want to hear her take on the Kamala Harris economic plan after you. Go ahead, Jordan. Oh no, I, I already said what I said. I'm, go go ahead. Oh, um, then go ahead, PhD. Did she yeah, did she see the clip of Kamala did you see Harris the clip? about her economic plan? I did not. Let me play so so because we I would really would like to get your take on that. Yeah, because just hit me, I did a good take on it. Go ahead. Hmm. What's the plan, Megan? Good morning, Steve. It's a big plan. So we now have the full details on Harris's economic agenda. It's focused in four parts on taxes, health care, housing and food. On the tax front, just this hour, we're learning Harris is calling to restore the child tax credit and to expand it to provide up to six thousand dollars for families with kids under one. She also wants to expand the earned income tax credit and reduce taxes on health insurance premiums. On health care, she wants to cap the cost of insulin at thirty five dollars and cap prescription drug costs at two thousand dollars for everyone, not just seniors. She's also vowing to increase competition in the pharmaceutical industry and to cancel medical debt for millions of people. On housing, she wants to use tax credits to incentivize construction of 3 million homes in her first term and provide up to $25,000 in down payment assistance for first-time buyers. She also wants to ban corporate price gouging in the grocery industry. So clearly here, guys, this is a left-leaning populist agenda that expands on and actually takes further some of President Biden's policies. It'll be celebrated by progressives, but it has already earned some criticism from some economists who compare it to price controls and who say it would exacerbate supply issues, especially especially in food and in housing. And for Trump's part, he's offering some of his own ideas this week, including ele cutting electricity and energy costs by half within a year by drilling for more oil. And he wants to permanently extend his 2017 tax cuts and cut regulation while imposing that minimum 10 percent tariff on all imports. Again here, of course, economists have concerns. The tax cuts would dramatically increase the debt, while tariffs would drive up prices. But clearly, there's still a long way to go before any of this becomes reality. It does show us though the priorities that each candidate is carrying into november uh yeah. shout out to true never favorite that's also in the building and also carl anderson is also in the building shout out to you big dog great to see you i ain't seen carl anderson in a long time great to see you big dog but go ahead um the lovely I Supreme heard this before. Oh. Uh, well so and then every, you could go just hit me out there yeah. go ahead Alexis, go ahead PhD. Like, Every election cycle, they come and they tell us, you know, all the different things that they're going to do. Uh, rarely do they do <laughs> even half of those things, right? So I don't really pay attention 
to that type of stuff, especially when it's just when they're just saying things like, "Oh, I'm a you know cut the price of prescriptions." Okay, how are you going to do that? How are you going to cap the price of prescriptions? Like, what's the plan, right? Um, but all of that aside, what I want to know is who got my reparations. That's what I'm voting on. So I don't care about none of that other shit, right? I already own. <laughs> 11 properties. I don't give a fuck about housing prices, right? <laughs> and so for me, who got my reparations? That's all I care about. So, 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 PhD, you just gonna throw that in our face? Like, you got 11 properties? Like, okay, no, no, no. I'm good. Just, no, I'm just saying that to say, you know, housing prices, housing price. Like, that's not something that, an issue that I'm concerned about. Mm. So. Go ahead, Jesse. Meow. You was going to say something. Go ahead. What was no, your thoughts? I, I'd heard this before from her. her I don't remember when, but the cor the corporate price gouging in grocery. What the? I We already heard earlier that Walmart is way up and people aren't going to Target, right? If, yep. if right. the margins are so fat in grocery, right? <laughs> like it's right, right. all being gouged, right? Target could just cut out the gouging and they would have all the business. I don't understand this concept that, like, it's called inflation, Kamala. You did it. Like, you, you, you put more money out there, prices go up because more people can buy the stuff. It's not gouging. Um, I It's just the weirdest thing for her to, like, put in her four-point plan. And, and we got to get those damn grocers. <laughs> Big grocery. <laughs> but yeah, but no, but it, remember, it's an idea she just throwing out there. So remember, people kept saying, "What is her economic plan? What what is she doing that's going to benefit the economy? Is it going to hurt it, or is going to benefit it?" And so that's why she had to throw something out there. PhD ever dropped off. We didn't yeah, drop you off, PhD. She she dropped off. She left. She left. I she think left. it's she actually left. a lame attempt to take away you know, from the inflation argument. No, no, no. I'm saying Kamala. Yeah. Yeah, Kamala. Yeah, that was she pretty much did. But I think. When the, I was saying, I'm very, I'm very curious about the Trump debate between her and Trump because I know Trump is gonna mention the aspect of the inflation because remember the Democratic Party is right now in power. How come we still have an issue with the inflation? You guys have not literally cooled it off yet. It's still, it's still, it's still high. And I didn't even know on um, PhD that like Homestead went up on prices. I was saying I gotta go back and look. Oh, uh, I didn't really check when it comes to the aspect of Homestead, but it just. Damn, PhD, you got 11 properties. Man, it's hard for you to date. Huh? That's that's called hoarding at that point. No, no. You're, you're hoarding no. properties. You need to let you need to a family that's move big, into one of those. That's big dollars. Hey, 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 she hey. impressed me. I like that. The you can date. She just, she, she just got to think of herself as a poor village girl. Unless somebody save her. No, PhD. <laughs> no, PhD will probably got rocks upon rocks. Eleven property, that's really good. That's really good. Mm -hmm. Well, how old did when you started buying property? If you don't mind me asking. Uh, in your thirties? Because I know you're twenty one, right? In my twenties is when I bought the first one. Oh, okay. You were you were scared? You were scared when you first bought it? Like tell us your experience. Because the no. people that's listening that's trying to buy a home. Go ahead. No, you said no. Because um, I was in school at the time so mm -hmm. and it wasn't like an expensive place at all so i was actually living there oh, okay right? okay um so the first property i was living in while i went to school uh it's in the college area so when i left i was able to rent it to other people other students uh so no not scary at all uh i think there is a lot of uh research that people need to do on the front end i've been seeing recently some videos about uh from people who are first time homeowners. And mm -hmm. uh, so when they buy like new construction, they uh, don't realize that the first year you're only paying taxes on the land, right? You're not paying right. it on the actual house, which is called the improvements, right? Uh, and so they get a big, uh, what they call it, a uh, sticker shop the next year when they start having to pay taxes on the land and the house right so the woman i saw in the video was saying she's about to sell her house because it made uh her payments go up i think it was like four hundred dollars a month but i'm like what if you can't afford an additional four hundred dollars a month then you probably couldn't afford that house to begin with right correct right correct 
so uh so yeah so just things like that people, you just have to know what you're getting into because owning a home is a, a a lot of responsibility right you can't call a landlord to fix your plumbing when you're single yeah you gotta do your or whatever right yeah so it's a pain in the ass and sometimes i ask myself do i want to continue to do this you know so uh another quick question you think um like you, you think there's a lot of false um narrative out there of, 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 of stopping like um, especially black people from buying a home like you know there's a lot of narrative out there that say black people should home they should just rent i think it's not one size fits all right so some people it depends on your uh situation and what your goals are uh so some people is better to own some people is better to rent um so i have another friend who she actually was the one who got me in to uh you know, investing in properties and buying property or whatever. But, you know, we had a conversation and this was several years ago, but she was saying that she knew then when she started what she knows now, she would have never bought a home for herself to live in, right? She would have mm -hmm. just rented and then bought her investment properties. So it just all depends. That's why Go it's ahead, so Jesse. important to um, that's why I no, no. to do the research and like you know figure out exactly what you're getting into and what works for what you got going on in your life. So, so your net worth right now, PhD, is ten million dollars. No, it's not ten million dollars. I wish it was. <laughs> I come you smile. I come you. I come you. I come you. I come you smile when you say no because I know you're smiling in the back. No, I'm actually not smiling. I'm about to cry because, like I said, I wish it was, but no, it's not. Submit. <laughs> 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 Go ahead, Jesse. Me no, he just hit me out. Hold on, Jesse. Me, I was gonna say something, Hakeem, and then you could go. Go ahead, Jesse. Me, you oh, I was just gonna say. It, I mean, it, uh, in terms of renting versus buying, uh, it really makes a big difference when you have kids, right? Because if, if you once you get them in school, um, mm -hmm. and you want to kind of give them some kind of permanence or something, if, or if you know you don't want to move somewhere, right? Then it's kind of important that think about buying that house instead of running because the rents will always go up Yeah, and you can even get to the point where they go, okay, we got to remodel the unit, right? They're going to increase it every year. And yeah, so and once you, your mortgage is no, going to increase every year. No, no, but, wait, but wait, quick question, but what about that? What, what, what about the bill? And insurance tend to go up every year. <laughs> but what about Mine that bill that just passed? What about that bill that just passed in the Supreme court when they say they can't really raise the rent as much as they didn't want to. I don't know if you heard, have you heard about that bill? We covered was it here. In California or something? That was like it, it, state it, specific, it, right? It specifically, I heard that too, Ronnie. It, it happened in California for sure. Right. It, it started uh, July 1st in California. Yeah. I, I don't know about it federally. I don't know about that, but it did happen in California, state of California for sure. The only thing I disagree with, with in I don't, I think it's fair or it's perfectly legitimate for places to raise their rent. They own the property, that's their business, right? But mm -hmm. I don't think it's right for them to raise your renewal while they're offering a new unit for less, right? To get yeah. people in. If you have an open unit, pretend I moved into that one. Give me that price then. Like, this is so stupid. Like, you you just raise it because you know I'd rather not move out. But my mortgage doesn't go up. My mortgage has been the same since we got it. it okay, sorry. It went up $53 uh, two years ago. Uh, no, but quick, no, but quick, quick question. What happened? And that you means, know, the means your house isn't gaining any equity. The, the value of your home is not going up. If your it is doubled. Aren't going up, and if your homeowner's insurance isn't going up, because your homeowner's insurance, the premium is literally based on how much it's going to cost to either uh, to replace your house, right? <laughs> so if the value, yeah, of sure, house, I guess. Again, if your mortgage ain't going up every year, and I mean the escrow part of it, right? So your property taxes, homeowners, mm -hmm. insurance, that's not going up every year, then your house isn't gaining equity. The value of your home is not increasing. Yeah, but so it's so, demonstrably false. That's I not, know that. Because, what? okay, so what is the property? Okay, so now in your little subdivision or whatever, what are mm -hmm. they basing the property taxes on? It's the value of your home, correct? They take uh, a percentage the, well, of the value about the county? of your home, which is why they give you an appraised value 